Thank you. Guys, I'm uh, Brian Wood. I'm the executive director of the Mass Republican Party. Uh, yeah, thank you all for coming. I'm Barry White impression. Uh, that's all right. <laughs> um, I'm here tonight representing uh, Kirsten Hughes, who's our uh, awesome state chairman. Unfortunately, she can't be here. She's running for re-election for Quincy City Council and has an event tonight. Um, but she wanted to thank all of you, and I wanted to thank you guys, too. Um, you know, obviously last year uh, we needed everybody. We needed donors, we needed volunteers, and everybody really came out and it led to obviously great success at the top of the ticket, but success all the way down the ticket with a whole bunch of state reps and state senators um, and, and other county offices across the state. So thank you guys so much for showing up, and I know uh, Kirsten wanted to uh, extend that message to you guys too. And thank you, Terry, so much. Sometimes little stories that stick in your mind. And uh, Mark Page, who is one of the contributors here, is uh, he's a single father of uh, two young daughters. And, uh, I extended an invitation to him to go to the inaugural ball. And at the time, I had said to him, you know, Mark, it would be a great time to invite a girl. But after you do that, what are you going to do for the next day? He says, well, I'll figure it out. A couple minutes later, he called me back. And he said, Dad, he said, Terry, can I bring my dad? And I'm like, wow. <laughs> wow, that was even better. So, yeah. Mark Page, great guy, and those are the stories of our campaign. And, uh, these are the people, Charlie, that you have in your uh, in your camp. We have with us tonight. We have with us tonight. I love your back. <laughs> who are the interns that are down at the state headquarters. And these kids work and work and work and work. And they are here tonight, and I would like them to raise their hands and identify themselves. So at this time, what we're going to do is we're going to turn it over to the governor, and he's going to say a few words. Better? Yeah. Better. <laughs> oh, darling, I... <laughs> that was unbelievable, wasn't it? I mean, so... <laughs> These guys break no. so much. Um, let me just say a couple things. First of all, Terry and his family, thank you so much. This is maybe the third or fourth time Lauren and I have taken over your backyard and trampled on your grass and spilled stuff in your driveway. And, and you keep inviting us back, which we really appreciate. And I do want to say thank you to so many of the familiar faces and friends that I see as I look around uh, this, this, this setup. Let me just say a couple things about the first six months. Um, the first thing is, this is a job where you shouldn't be surprised when you get surprised, because it happens a lot. And uh, it happened for us, in fact, on the night that Lauren and I were driving home from the inauguration party. We're driving home, and the phone rings, and it's the mayor of Boston, and he calls, and he says, I just wanted you to know that Boston's just been selected to host the 2024 Olympics, and we'll be back at the convention center at 7 in the morning for a press conference. And I'm thinking to myself, first of all, Okay, so that means my first event as governor, official event as governor, is going to be an event on Boston 2024. Not something I talked about or campaigned on or thought about once during like the entire campaign. And the second thing I thought was, well, this means no one's going to care about the fact that we just got inaugurated. And yeah. sure enough, we looked at the papers the next day. Boston selected for 2024. There's some guy named Baker got inaugurated. <laughs> That's, you know, if you'd said to me, we're going to get nine feet of snow between January 28th and February 28th, I would have taken that bet. If someone had told me that the MBTA was going to melt down, if somebody had told me that we were going to inherit a $1.8 billion budget deficit, I mean, there's just so many things that just drop out of the sky and aren't things that you expect and you just sort of have to roll with it and play the hand. And um, we have a terrific team in place and I think in many ways what could have been a really tough start 
ended up being this great opportunity for us to show the people of the Commonwealth how we would go about doing the business of the Commonwealth. And I think the fact that we took this very no-nonsense, just get the just get the job done approach to both the snowstorm and to the budget deficits and everything else, I think people came away saying, um, these guys really aren't about scoring points, they're just about doing the work. And the world we live in, which is so polarized politically and so much about rhetoric and noise, I think for a lot of people in Massachusetts that was a refreshing change and I think a big part of the reason why we sit here today with a 65% favorability rating is because people in Massachusetts responded to that. It didn't matter you know, what party they were from, they just felt good about what they saw going on on Beacon Hill. And, uh, and that never would have happened if it hadn't been for the work and the effort of folks like you all over the Commonwealth, because we only won by 40,000 votes. Now, I haven't met anybody since Election Day who didn't vote for me. Okay? <laughs> Lauren, have you met anybody who didn't vote for us? <laughs> Yeah, it is the strangest thing, you know. You get 49% of the vote, and no matter where you go, hey, I voted for you, hey, I voted for you, I voted for you. And I'm thinking, really? so you're, you're Charlie Barker, right? I voted for you. Yeah. Um, it's true. But that's part of what, um, what you get when you put what I described all the way through the campaign, is that creative tension on Beacon Hill. You know, both teams on the field, best ideas, but a lot of pushing and shoving between Republicans and Democrats, legislature and the administration, um, that ultimately leads to a much better product than you get if you just have one team and one voice. And uh, Brian mentioned that we also managed to win some House seat races and some Senate races. Those made a big difference as well, uh, because they also helped send the message that the people in Massachusetts were looking to go in a different direction. And you add it all up, and, and yeah, we have a ton of work to do and a long way to go, but I think we're off to a terrific start, and we never would have got there if it hadn't been for literally the thousands of people around the Commonwealth who knocked on the doors, made the phone calls, and contributed to our campaign. Our campaign was the first statewide race in a major race in a very long time where um, the Republican candidate outraised the Democrat financially, and where we knocked on more doors uh, and made more phone calls than they did. And if you looked at how that translated on election day, I said we won by 40,000 votes, right? Well, we did the math and we basically figured out that we got about 80,000 people who normally don't vote in presidential elections. Excuse me, gubernatorial elections. Slip of the tongue. Sorry. <laughs> election years to come out and vote for us and we won by 40,000 votes so you do the math it's very clear to me that the effort and the time and the attention we put in to identifying our voting turning it out and working real hard to make sure that we got people all over the Commonwealth involved in this race paid off in the end and, uh, and I think the product that you see so far is exactly what we said we were going to do focus on the work fiscally disciplined really aggressive on uh, sort of focusing on the customer and making sure that we were doing the work that we needed to get done for the people in Massachusetts. Um, I do want to, of course, thank my bride for putting up with all of this nonsense. <laughs> yeah, Lord. And I do run into people all the time, in addition to the ones who say that they voted for me, uh, Charlie Barker. <laughs> I also run into a lot of people who say, I don't really like you very much, but I love your wife. So. <laughs> um, that was worth at least 40,000 votes. Yeah. And, uh, and as we sit here tonight, um, you know, we balanced two budgets. We didn't raise taxes and fees. We supported cities and towns. We supported higher education. Um, and we're getting the work every single day done in a way that works for the folks in Massachusetts. And people are responding positively to it. We have a ton of stuff left to do to really break, build the great state we want to build from one end to the other. But I do want to take this chance um, to thank you all for everything you did because without it, we don't get home, we don't get started, and we don't get the chance to do the, the work we wanted to do. I do also want to, by the way, um, 
thank Leah Porter for being willing to take the reins of managing the, common, uh, the Swamp Scott Republican Town Committee. That is no small task, and we very much appreciate your willingness to step up and do that. And I do want to say how much I'm looking forward uh, to 16 and to 18 um, and to continuing to sort of build the brand, build the team, and, uh, and make the case to people in Massachusetts. Thank you very much.